Hi there. Have you ever wondered how listening to the news can transform your English skills? Well, you're about to find out. Let's get straight to it with a mind-boggling fact. Did you know that one of the most effective ways to learn English, especially British English, is by tuning into the news? Now, I'm not talking about struggling to understand complex political debates. I'm referring to a light, highly entertaining and informative news roundup, like the one I'm about to give you in this podcast. You'll be surprised at how familiar some of these news items are. And this familiarity, along with the unique Adept English approach, makes understanding English much easier. But the cherry on the top? The best bit, in other words? It's the wealth of new and useful vocabulary that you'll learn each time you listen. Imagine how impressive you'll sound using these words in your English conversations. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. And let's make this interactive. If you're on Spotify, why not share this podcast with your family and friends who are also on their English language learning journey? They'll say thank you for such juicy listening. An adept English will thank you for helping us grow our community and stay with us till the end for a new story on a controversial bottle of whiskey. How can a bottle of whiskey offend people? Stay tuned to find out. And if you're struggling, if you're having difficulties with your English language understanding, don't worry, we've got you covered. We have an amazing course, The Most Common 500 Words in English. Yes, alongside these podcasts, we also offer courses. This course ensures that you know all the most common words in English, which are the building blocks for speaking and understanding the language. And here's a bonus. The course actually covers the most common 600 words. That's an extra 100 words just for you. So go to our website at adeptenglish.com to find out more about this course. You'll be glad you did. OK, to the news. So one of the news items that may be affecting you, there's a heat wave in southern Europe at the moment. A heat wave is a compound or joined word from the word heat, H-E-A-T, meaning hotness, and wave, W-A-V-E. A wave is a pattern of movement. Most commonly, you'd think about waves in the sea. And the word heat wave, it means that hot temperatures will travel in a wave across the map. So this heat wave in Southern Europe means that temperatures are likely to be 40 degrees centigrade, at least 40 degrees centigrade in parts of Spain, France, Croatia and Turkey. And in Italy next week, it could be as high as 48 degrees centigrade. Yikes, that's hot. And this could mean potentially the hottest ever recorded temperatures in Europe, according to the European Space Agency. I've noticed the temperatures forecast in Italy, particularly as my daughter is traveling in Italy at the moment. I've been WhatsApping her, wear a hat, carry water, Stay out of the sun between midday and four. She's been hearing this advice from me all week. I've been in Greece when it's 42 degrees centigrade. Not comfortable and not great for sleeping. So they are nicknaming this heat wave Cerberus. That's C-E-R-B-E-R-U-S. And that name is after the three-headed dog that guards the underworld in Greek mythology. And inevitably, this heat wave is being linked to climate change. Climate, C-L-I-M-A-T-E, means weather patterns. And climate change generally is used to mean the weather patterns that we worry about, that the world is hotting up because of carbon dioxide or CO2. Levels of carbon dioxide have risen higher than ever before since the 1950s. And this seems to be correlated to temperature rise. It's also been particularly hot this year in the US, North Africa, the Middle East and Asia too. It's not just in Europe. 
Bizarrely, while all of this is going on, the UK has lost its heat wave. As I'm speaking, it's 16 degrees centigrade and rainy here. Hard sometimes to imagine if you're in one place in the world that the weather can be so different somewhere else. Next news item. Did you know that India is about to launch its third moon mission called Chandrayaan-3? This mission, M-I-S-S-I-O-N, which means a journey with a purpose, is unmanned. Unmanned, U-N-M-A-N-N-E-D, means there are no astronauts, no people on board. It's all done by robots and controlled from Earth. And the phrase being used, it's a soft moon landing. Only a part of the spaceship lands on the moon. Apparently, a soft moon landing is really tricky, really difficult. Despite lots of highly specialised technology and calculations and planning, it can easily go wrong. Chandrayaan-3 is made up of three modules. A module, M-O-D-U-L-E, is a part of something. There is a propulsion module. So the word propulsion, P-R-O-P-U-L-S-I-O-N, that's from the verb to propel, P-R-O-P-E-L, which means to push along. So the propulsion module powers the spacecraft, takes it on its journey, if you like. Chandrayaan-3 will take off and will arrive within 100 kilometres of the moon and then it will orbit. To orbit, O-R-B-I-T, means to travel round. So this propulsion module will effectively park nearer to the moon and remain in orbit and then a lander module will hope fully accomplish the landing, which is very difficult to do. Apparently, moon dust gets in the way and is a very big problem. And then there is a rover module, that's R-O-V-E-R. To rove, R-O-V-E in English means to travel about and to explore. So it's hoped that the rover module will travel about, collect samples, take photographs, do some mapping, so that's assisting with the atlas of the moon, the geography of the moon, and it will also look for evidence of water or ice on the moon. Chandrayaan-3 will have been launched on the 14th of July and will take around 42 days before landing on the moon. So that'll be around the 23rd of August. Why does it take so long? Well, that's because Chandrayaan-3 will have to orbit the Earth five times making a bigger orbit each time it goes round. That's in order to escape the Earth's gravity, G-R-A-V-I-T-Y, the force which pulls objects towards a large thing like a planet, which pulls objects towards the Earth. And it will flip into the Moon's gravitational pull, and it will orbit five times around the Moon before it attempts to land. It will be captured by the moon's gravity, in other words. This mission is about learning more about the moon and Chandrayaan-3 will visit a part of the moon that hasn't been much explored yet. But the mission is also about developing the technology, refining it and testing it out in a real life situation so that further space exploration will be possible. What about a less mainstream news article to finish off with? This one caught my eye. Do you like whiskey? I don't. It makes me shudder and go, Brr. but that's W-H-I-S-K-Y. I'm sure it's an alcoholic drink that you've heard of anyway. So in the UK, retailers, that's R-E-T-A-I-L-E-R-S and basically means sellers or shops. They've been asked by the Portman Group to stop selling a particular type of whiskey. The Portman Group keep an eye on how alcohol is sold in the UK. They make sure everyone's following the rules. They're a regulator, R-E-G-U-L-A-T-O-R, -E -A, a body, an organisation that insists that the rules are followed. Why have they got a problem with this particular bottle of whiskey? Well, the whiskey on sale in Scotland is called Cosa Nostra, 
And it's this name and the bottle and its packaging that are giving cause for concern. Cosa Nostra, of course, is another term for the Italian mafia. Mafia, M-A-F-I-A, is an organised crime group, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. What's problematic is that the bottle that the whiskey is in is in the shape of a machine gun or Tommy gun. The top of the bottle, the bit that you unscrew, is like the end of the gun barrel. So effectively, it could look like you're drinking out of the end of a machine gun. I can see why this is a problem and perhaps why the regulator thinks this product shouldn't be on our shelves on sale. Effectively, it's using a machine gun to promote whiskey and is said to be glorifying violence and gun crime. The Portman Group said it's unacceptable for an alcoholic drink because it suggests an association with violent and dangerous behaviour. I'm inclined to agree with them. But perhaps this reflects different attitudes towards guns in different countries. It may be different in other areas of the world. But the Portman Group aren't the only ones to condemn this bottle of whiskey. The whiskey isn't made in Italy. It's made by a Polish company. But in fact, Italy's biggest agricultural trade organisation, Coldiretti, have also condemned this Cosa Nostra product for associating with the Sicilian Mafia. Coldiretti is another regulator, an Italian regulator. They're the ones who look after the Made in Italy labelling. Here's some Italian for you. Denominazioni di origine controllata. That's my best Italian. Not very Italian, I'm sorry. But these are the rules which govern the use of names like Chianti, the Italian wine, or Parmesan, Parmigiano Reggiano, more Italian for you. They don't like this Cosa Nostra whiskey either. And I do understand why. Anyway, that's my short news roundup for this week. Let us know what you think. Are you caught up in one of these heat waves? What do you think of the Indian moon landing mission? And what's your opinion on that whiskey bottle? Should it be allowed or not? Let us know. And don't forget to listen to this podcast a number of times until you understand all the words in it. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.